Thank you for downloading Manage Engine Service Desk Plus. In this video, we are going to learn about OAuth configuration, its benefits, the available types, and how it works with Service Desk Plus. What is OAuth? OAuth is an open standard for access delegation, commonly used as a way for internet users to grant websites or applications access to their information on other websites but without giving them the passwords. Why is it required? Starting on October 13, 2020, Azure AD is retiring their basic authentication, followed by G Suite on February 15, 2021. What are the advantages? Using basic authentication, if an account is compromised, changes to the account revoke access to application that are using the account. With OAuth, you can directly revoke the privilege of a specific application without interrupting other services. Now let's take a look at what are the authentication servers that can be configured with Service Desk Plus. Service Desk Plus can be configured with Azure and G Suite servers. All right then, now let's learn how to configure G Suite or Azure authentication servers with Service Desk Plus and learn what are the prerequisites required for the configuration. OAuth authentication in Service Desk Plus is available from version 11106. Make sure you're in the latest version to use this feature. When you go to Admin, Mail Service Settings in Service Desk Plus, in any instance of Service Desk, so be it IT, HR, or facilities, or any instance in Service Desk Plus, you get an option to switch between Basic Authentication or OAuth. The moment you switch to OAuth, you get access to the Admin Guide, which gives you detailed information on what are the configuration servers available, how they could be configured, and how it works. Azure Authentication Server To configure Azure Authentication Server with Service Desk Plus, you need to access portal.azure.com. Once you are into portal.azure.com, you need to configure apps that can be used in Service Desk Plus. Now, to configure Service Desk Plus with Azure, you need to ensure that Service Desk Plus runs with HTTPS mode and also you need to choose EWS protocol and not POP or IMAP. So I'm switching to EWS protocol, choosing O authentication as authentication type. Now, as you could see here, I need to get the connection URL, the email addresses, the username and password, along with all the client information. These are details that can be configured through the app registration. And while I'm on it, I will be accessing this data and adding them right into Service Desk Plus. So while I'm at app registration, I'm going to click on new registration over here i need to define what is the app that is going to use this particular configuration so i'm going to say service desk plus then i'm choosing the accounts and i need to define my redirect url now this redirect url is going to be available in your service desk plus so all i have to do is Click on this link and I get my redirect URL copy. I'm going to access the redirect URL and paste it right into my app. The basic purpose of this redirect URL is to ensure authentication and security so that no one else can spoof a redirect URL and bypass the authentication. So once I've defined the details, I'm going to click on register. And as I said, Service Desk, in order to be configured with Azure, the application needs to be running on HTTPS protocol. Now, once that I have defined or created the app, I get a couple of information and let's see what are those information that I could make use of. So right over here, I get my client ID. This is important. So I'm just going to copy this information and I'm going to paste it right into my mail server settings. Done. Now what's next? Now you get access to endpoints. Click on endpoints and you have OAuth 2.0 authorization endpoint and token endpoint. We need these two details in order to be configured in Service Desk Plus. And these two information goes right into the authorization URL and token URL. So I copy my authorization URL, which is the OAuth authorization endpoint and I paste it right into my 
authorization URL. Then I copy my endpoint token and I paste it right into my token URL. Once this is done, I'm going to click on Certificates and Secrets. Now I need to create a new secret client certificate for which I'm going to click on New Client Secret. Over here, I can choose the expiry dates and I'm going to say for which application this certificate is being created. I'm adding it for Service Test Plus application. Click on Add and I get my new client secret added over here. Now that I've got my client secret, I copy this information and I paste it right into my client secret. Earlier, when we configured the authorization URL, the scope information was automatically populated. However, we need to configure the scope in Microsoft Azure and update the settings into Service Test Plus. To start defining the scope, go to API and Permissions. Click on Add Permission and from the list, choose Exchange. Click on Delegate Permission, EWS, enable the checkbox and click on Add Permission. Now, the permission has been added and, and you need to grant consent, so click on Grant Consent say yes and as you can see the settings are updated now from this particular scope copy the url and ensure the same url is updated into the scope and also make sure at the very end of the scope add the parameter comma offline underscore access now we have defined the scope for Azure into Service Desk Plus. Now that I have configured all my Azure details in Service Desk Plus, the settings are fully configured. I go ahead and click on Save. Once I click on Save, I'm directed to the Microsoft site and over here I need to give in my O365 account details. Once the details are provided, I consent and I click on accept. Once done, the email settings are saved successfully and the connection from Service Desk Plus to Azure is established successfully. With this, we have seen how we can easily configure OAuth authentication from Service Desk Plus with Azure AD. G Suite as the authentication service. Now we are going to see how we could configure G Suite to be the authentication server for Service Desk Plus. To configure G Suite with Service Desk Plus, G Suite requires the applications to be a public top-level domain. In Service Desk Plus under Mail Server Settings, as we discussed, we have POP, IMAP and other protocols along with Exchange Web Service and the authentication type varies between BASIC and OAuth. So I switch to OAuth and you get access to admin guide, FAQ and all details in specific to OAuth for AD or G Suite. Now, for G Suite, you need to log into console.developers.google.com and once you do so, you're directed into Google's API configuration page. Now, the first step we need to do is to create a new project. To create a new project, I click on the top drop-down and I click on new project. I define my project name, choose the location and click on create. Once my project is created, under APIs and services, I go to library and over here, I need to enable the API that I'm going to use for my OAuth. So I'm just going to look for Gmail and I get access to Gmail API and I need to enable this. Once I enable the Gmail API, then I need to proceed further with configuration on credentials and OAuth configuration. After enabling the API, I need to go to the OAuth console screen and I need to enable external and click on create. This is for any user who's going to have access with Google. And while I'm at this page, I need to provide for which application is this authentication being created and over here I'm going to choose Service Desk Plus. 
choose the image that is required and then add the scope. While adding the scope, click on add scope, choose Gmail API. Click on add and the scope has been added. The chosen scope is displayed right over here and once the scope is defined, the settings are done with regards to OAuth consent and I click on save. Once the consents are being defined, the next is to define the credentials. To create the credentials, I access the credential on the left panel and I get an option to create credentials. Over here, I choose OAuth Client ID and this is what is required. I choose Web Application. I provide the client name. Once I've defined the name, always remember we need to have the redirect URL defined. And as I said before, the application should be listed on a public domain. To get the redirect URL, go to Service Test Plus, copy the redirect URL and paste it. Once the credentials are created, you get access to the client ID and the client secret. You can copy it from this pop-up window and paste it right into your Service Test Plus configuration page. Now, right next to the client ID that you have created, you get a download symbol. Now, this download is the JSON that is being created by Google. Now, when you click on this particular JSON, it opens up the complete list of information that is required to be configured on Service Test Plus. So, let's see how these parameters can be easily configured. We have already received our client ID and client secret. We now require the authorization URL, the token URL, and the scope. So in the JSON, we just need to go right through all these particular values listed over here. So the client, starting from the beginning of this particular JSON, you have the client ID listed, and that ends right over here. And the next is the project that we have created. So this is the project ID. So we are not gonna use the project ID, the next is going to be the authorization URL. So we require this piece of information. So copy exactly from within the double quotes and paste this information right into the authorization URL. The next would be the token URL. So right next to the authorization URL is the token URL. Copy the token URL and paste it right within Service Test Plus. Now, as you can see, I have defined all the details that is required for my OAuth configuration from Service Test Plus with G Suite. Once these settings are all configured, it's good to go and I click on Save. I'm now redirected right into the Google Authentication screen. So I provide the username and password. This information is required to verify the redirect URL and ensure the authentication is secure. I get all the required information and it's verifying this particular app that we have created in Google along with the settings that we have provided in Service Test Plus. Upon clicking on Allow, the settings are saved and the details are successfully configured in Service Test Plus. This way, we have now seen how Service Test Plus successfully authenticates with G Suite and the OAuth configuration between Service Test Plus and Google Suite are successfully configured.